Welcome to our workshop on modeling and maintaining research applications in Tosca. My name is Philip and I will get my hands on OpenTosca. First of all, we need a local instance of the OpenTosca ecosystem. So let's head over to GitHub and clone ourselves a copy of the OpenTosca Docker repository. We will then use Docker Compose to start all parts of the OpenTosca ecosystem on our local machine as interconnected Docker containers. Within our repository, we created a DH2020 workshop tag, which we will check out. We can either download the whole repository as a zip file or copy the GitHub URL and clone the repository using the Git command line interface. We will do the latter. So let's head over to our terminal and get started. Using the git command line interface, we first clone the OpenTosca Docker repository and then check out our workshop tag. We then have to configure our local OpenTosca instance. To ease the configuration, the repository contains templates for a Docker Compose environment and overrides file. For this workshop, we will only have to adjust the environment settings. Because the OpenTosca ecosystem will run as different Docker containers, it has to know the public IP address of its Docker host. Using the ifconfig command, we can look up our public IP address and supply it to OpenTosca as the environment variable public hostname. Next, we will pull all Docker images that make up the Docker Compose stack of the OpenTosca ecosystem. And as soon as we pulled all those images, we can go on and start our local OpenTosca ecosystem. The startup process might take a couple of minutes, depending on the available internet connection, as OpenTosca will download some assets on its first launch and the processing power of the used workstation. Since this is not a live presentation, I took the opportunity and sped up the video playback during the startup process. When you run this locally, please be patient. As soon as the startup process is completed, we can head back to our browser and navigate to the OpenTosca UI which is now exposed at the public hostname we configured previously. In the OpenTosca UI, we can manage all available and installed Tosca service templates. But more on this topic later. For now, let's open the OpenTosca binary and create our own service template. To uniquely identify our service template, we assign it a name and a version identifier. We could also assign a custom namespace, but we'll use the preset example namespace in this case. To further represent our application in the collection scene in the OpenTosca UI, we may specify a name and description under the self-service portal tab. The name, version and namespace as seen in the header above the tabs are used to identify our service template while the self-service portal settings specify metadata used to represent the application. This metadata may describe the inner workings or purpose of the application and can include a logo or a screenshot. So let's attach the DH2020 conference logo to make our application eye candy. When we are done configuring all the metadata describing our application, we can hop back to the OpenTosca UI and have a look at our application listing. Just a quick click on the refresh button and there it is. But at this point our application lacks any components or logic. To change this, we'll jump into the binary topology editor and model ourselves a real-world application. As with many real-world applications, our example consists of a Java server. More specifically, a Spring web application running on top of a Java 8 JVM. And since any application needs a host and we are already running Docker, we'll add a Docker container and a Docker engine node to our application's topology. We have now added all necessary parts for the server side of our real-world application. So let's wire things up.
As mentioned, the Spring web application depends on a Java 8 JVM, and those components themselves are hosted on a Docker container, which, in turn, is hosted on a Docker engine, as the Docker engine will spin up and control the respective Docker container. Next, we will model the client side of our real-world application. We will use an Angular client and therefore need a web server like Apache, or in this case Nginx, to serve the client code and assets. And just as we did with the server side of our real-world application, recreate relationships between the nodes on the client side, furthering the topological model of our application. We could co-host the client side on the same Docker container as the server side, but instead we add another Docker container hosting the client side of our real-world application. This container then is co-hosted on the same Docker engine as the server side. And last but not least, we create a relationship between the Angular client and the Spring server nodes. Now our application topology contains all necessary nodes and we can arrange them visually. We will now configure all necessary properties of the used nodes. Starting on the client side, we specify a name for our Angular application and go on to configure the properties of the client side Docker container. To defer setting some properties to the moment of instantiating our real world application, we can use the special prefix get input. We thereby tell OpenTosca to ask the user for these properties when he wants to create an instance of our application. After setting all necessary properties on the client side, we go on and do the same on the server side of the topology of our real world application. First, we specify a name and a port for our Java Spring web application node and then go on to specify corresponding properties to the underlying server-side Docker container. Here, we again use the special get input prefix to defer the configuration of the exposed port of our server-side Docker container and therefore the port on which we will later access the Spring web application server to the moment of instantiating our real-world application. Finally, we again use the getInput prefix to tell OpenTosca to prompt the user for the Docker engine URL when spinning up an instance of our application. We have now completed wiring up and configuring all nodes and can move on and attach any necessary deployment artifacts. Deployment artifacts can contain any kind of data, for example, database dumps, business logic, or any binaries needed to successfully deploy and operate the node they are attached to. In the case of our Spring Web Application node, we attach a pre-built Java archive containing the server-side business logic. We do so by specifying a name and an existing deployment artifact. We could also create a new deployment artifact ad hoc, but that is out of the scope of this workshop. The same procedure is repeated on the client side, but instead of attaching a Java archive, we attach a distribution-ready Angular application, which will be served by the underlying Nginx web server. Now our topology model is finally complete. We have attached all deployment artifacts, specified all properties and wired up all relationships which are relevant to deploy and operate our real-world application. It's time to actually deploy our application, so we'll head back to the OpenTosca UI and tell OpenTosca to prepare the deployment. Behind the scenes, this will tell the Tosca runtime to use our topology model to create deployment and termination plans for our application. As soon as this process is completed, our application will be available for instantiation. We can now spin up a usable instance of our real-world application, so let's do that. As we have deferred setting some of the necessary properties while modeling our topology, we are prompted to input values for these properties now. We may use any ports 
in the range between 9990 and 9999. To let OpenTosca connect to our local Docker engine, we input the public IP of our Docker host, followed by the port 2222. When we hit refresh, we can see an instance of our application which is in the creating state. After waiting a couple of minutes and hitting refresh again, our instance reached the created state and is ready for use. So let's have a look. We can now access the created real-world application instance at our public IP address, followed by the port we input when OpenTosca prompted us for a front-end port. As we can see, there is an actual and usable real-world application accessible under that URL. And that's it, folks. We have reached the end of our OpenTosca hands-on session. I hope you enjoyed this video. Next up is Anna with a short conclusion of this workshop and an outlook on the Sustain Life project. Thank you for watching.